Hey everyone, I'm Shane Hennessy, and in today's video, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how to improve the audio quality and the sound quality of your live streams. I'm also going to go through what I use for my live streams. Now, this video applies mainly to streaming from a computer, but if you are a mobile device user, you can also get some tips from this, and some bits at the end of the video are specific to mobile. Uh, as a musician, it's mainly geared towards musicians, but you can use a lot of these tips for any kind of stream, no matter what you want to stream about. You can even follow these tips for improving the quality of your video and audio on video calls, on vlogs, podcasts, and even voice memos. Uh, before starting, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit the subscribe button below, and thank you in advance. So I'm going to start off with improving your audio, because it seems to me that viewers are happier to watch any kind of a video once the sound is good, but audio, as in bad audio, will turn off a viewer immediately off a stream. So you can get away with good audio and bad video. You can't get away with bad audio and good video. Uh, my first tip is to use a mixing desk that has EQ controls combined with a separate audio interface. Most people who live stream set up their phone or their, their iPad or their tablet, and they kind of just hope for the best. Some people try to use amplifiers and things like that. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. In most cases, you tend to get a lot of ambient room sound and it can sound very muffled. A uh, basic mixing desk will be able to help you to sound an awful lot better because you're able to shape the sound before you hit your audio interface. So on a mixing desk, you should be able to EQ your voice and your instruments to get them to sound good and to add in effects like reverb. That makes a big difference to the overall sound. The reason that I recommend using a mixing desk and an interface is that interfaces don't usually have any EQ controls, meaning that if you use them on their own, you have to depend on software if you want to alter the sound. Now, it's not totally, totally necessary to use both. There are plenty of programs out there where you can edit sound, but doing it this way, using a mixer and then an audio interface reduces the stress or the load on your computer. The mixing desk that I use is a Mackie DL32R, which is a 32-channel mixer, and it's controlled via an iPad. So when I'm streaming, I'm controlling all of my EQ, my gains and levels, and I apply reverb to my vocals, all via the iPad. Um, you don't have to have this system, but think of the iPad as the knobs on a mixing desk. It's doing exactly the same thing. Um, this is exactly what I would use for a live show. If I were going somewhere with this mixer, my sound man would have the iPad and he would be mixing me live on the iPad. So there's no difference to the way I'm setting up. The only addition I have are these stereo microphones here. To improve the clarity of your live stream, I would recommend using a microphone as it's probably going to be better for the audio quality than the inbuilt microphone on, let's say, your, your laptop or your phone is going to be. If you've got a second or third microphone, or if your instrument has got a pickup, meaning that it plugs in, I recommend using a little bit of those as well. Um, it all depends on the amount of channels that you've got on your mixer. On mine, I've got 32 channels. I don't use all 32 channels, so you don't need anything that extravagant. Chances are your one will most likely have anywhere between four and 16 channels on a mixer. So then from the, ex from the mixer, I take the stereo out uh, on your mixer, this might say left out and right out, and I put these into an interface. So this, an interface goes between your equipment and your computer so that it makes sense of the signal for the computer. Uh, they connect in a number of different ways. The one I have here is a Roland Rubik's 24, which connects via USB. Now, this part is really important. You might be thinking, okay, my mixer has a USB out and it can function like an interface, so why do I need a separate interface? And this is the answer. A lot of audio interfaces work fine when you're using them with a DAW like Pro Tools or Logic, but when you use a different program with them, for some reason, they tend to hard pan channel one of the interface to the left and channel two to the right, and they tend to forget about all the other channels that exist. I'm not sure why this is. This is just something that I've found, and in researching it on forums online, it seems that other people have this problem as well. Now, there are ways to get around this that I've found, but none of them are particularly user-friendly. 
So my way of getting around it is that the left channel from the mixer, the left stereo out, goes into channel one of the interface, and the right channel from the mixer, which is the right stereo out, that goes into channel two of the interface. So the benefit of this is that because the computer hard pans channel one to the left and channel two to the right, if you put anything in stereo into your mixer, it will also come out in stereo, stereo through your interface. So when I'm set up for a live stream, I've got my microphone in the middle, straight in the middle. I've got the microphone on the left in your left ear and the microphone on the right in your right ear. So it gives me a lovely stereo image. I've also got my guitar plugged in. I've got my octave pedal plugged in and my stomp box. And I'll, what I'll often do is I'll take two uh, channels uh, of my DI, my guitar DI, so that I can also pan the guitar DI in the sound as well. If you're a live performer or a live musician, um, you can imagine this exactly the same way as the sound coming from your mixing desk into a PA system. The only difference is the PA system has now been replaced by an interface. That's it. Everything before that step is exactly the same. So the final step then is connecting your interface to your computer. This might be via USB or Thunderbolt or Firewire or, or any of those connections. This then completes the audio setup of the interface going into the computer. So up to now we've got our microphones and our instruments connected to the mixer. We're doing all of our EQs and effects and the overall sound control in the mixer. We're then taking the stereo outs from the mixer left and right and putting them into channels one and two on our audio interface. And then we're connecting the interface to the computer via the USB output. The last thing that we have to check is that our levels aren't clipping, meaning that there's too much signal going into the interface. Most interfaces have a little light on each channel that turns red if the signal is too strong. So if yours is showing red, uh, you have to reduce the gain on the channels or reduce the gain or volume on your mixing desk until the light is mostly green all the way through. That's what you're, you're aiming for. Uh, you might also have to check levels in the software if you're using streaming software or in your computer's inbuilt audio settings. Um, when I'm streaming, I plug my headphones into the headphone jack of my interface so that I can hear what I sound like. The audio that coming from the interface is exactly what your audience is going to hear. So if something sounds wrong to you or if you hear a strange noise or something, they're going to hear it as well. So make sure that you check the audio through the headphone jack of the interface because that's what everyone else is going to hear. So that's it for the audio for now. We'll move on to talking about the video. At the moment, I use the built-in front-facing camera on my laptop. Um, in an ideal world, I'd use my DSLR camera, which is what I'm using right now, as my camera source for the stream. But for me, that's not possible at the moment. There are solutions out there in the form of capture cards like this, which allows you to plug your camera into your computer. But unless your laptop or computer has a dedicated graphics card, you might run into a couple of issues doing this. Um, that's the problem that I ran into. My laptop doesn't have a dedicated graphics card. It only has the built-in graphics card. But luckily my laptop has a HD front facing camera so it can give me 720p resolution which is fine for online streaming. Um, in many ways what's more important than the, um, than the camera you use is how you light your shot. Uh, the more light you can get the better in general. If you can be close to a window where there's a lot of natural light coming in on top of you your shot should generally look fairly good. If you're set in a setting like I am now, where you're in sort of a, a dark room, uh, you might need uh, an extra light uh, in order just to brighten yourself up and brighten the shot up a bit. I've got a light up there that's shining some light on me. I've got the window shining some light in here, and I've also got the lights in the room on as well. Uh, you don't have to have anything fancy for this. I mean, lamps and desk lights work really well. It's just so that the camera doesn't have to compensate as much for the lack of light. That's when you tend to get that graininess. Um, in your shot. The other sort of optional video uh, visual things are to consider what's in your background uh, and how to light it differently to make it look a bit better. I'm not in my studio at the moment. I purposely film this in a bedroom uh, because that seems to be where most streams online are happening. Um, I'm also conscious of what clothes I wear to separate myself from the background. So you can see that my blue shirt stands out an awful lot from the mostly brown background here. Um, so those are all things to take into consideration where it comes to video. Um, at this point, 
there are slightly different courses of action I take whether I'm doing a stream from my laptop or whether I'm doing one from my phone. So I'll start with what I do when I stream from my laptop. I use free software called OBS to control my stream. Uh, OBS allows me to choose the video source, the audio source, and also to overlay graphics, text, and even live elements on the screen. Uh, but most importantly, it allows me to limit how much data I'm sending from my computer to my streaming source so that my internet connection isn't overloaded, which causes dropouts, buffering, and glitches. Um, you can download OBS from obsproject.com and it'll run on Mac, Windows, and Linux software. And OBS looks like this. So when you've got OBS downloaded and installed, it should open up on your computer or laptop like this. You should see a black screen. And what we want to do is we want to go to sources. So we press down here in the box, uh, there's a little plus button that says add. And the first thing we'll add is our video capture device. Now I'm using my laptop camera on this, so I'm just going to call it laptop cam. I press OK. And then under device, you'll see FaceTime HD camera, if it's installed, if you're using a Mac like I am. Uh, otherwise, your uh, laptop camera should come up here as well. The other thing is, if you're using a capture card uh, to get the video from your DSLR camera, this is where this will show up as well. So I tried to go for the highest quality possible. In this case, it's 720p, and I press OK. So now I've got my camera on the screen. The second thing I want to do is I'll go back to this plus button and I'll go to audio input capture. And in this case, my interface is called a Rubik's. So I'll just call it Rubik's. You can call it whatever you want. Again, it doesn't really matter. We go to Rubik's 24 because that is the name of my interface. And I go down here and I see that my audio levels, they're in the green going into the yellow, which means that the audio levels are good. So now that we've got that set up, the other thing we can look at doing if we want, you, can, you might want to put some text on the screen. A lot of people do this to put their website on the screen, their name, or some people who look for the virtual tip jar or donations, they might want to put this in there. So you can call your text anything you want. I'm going to call it sample text. And then you can place it on the screen. Like that. And you can do anything you want with it. Drag it, move it around the screen. It's really, really easy. So that's all fine. You can put pictures on the screen. You can do really whatever you want. But the most important thing about this is the video bitrate setting. So we're going to find this in here in settings. And when we go in here to stream, or excuse me, into output, we'll see here in the first box that says streaming video bitrate 2,500 kilobits per second. Now this is probably the most important thing in this video. If you don't set this to suit your internet connection, you might have problems with your stream dropping out or buffering or all kinds of problems like this. This essentially sets a limit on how much data leaves your computer over the internet on this stream. So my internet connection where I am is quite slow. I've got an upload speed of five megabytes per second. So what we want to do is we want to aim for half of that as our video bit rate. So half of that 5,000 kilobits per second is 2,500 kilobits per second. So I, I put that as my video bit rate so I don't run into any of those issues. And the way you find out your internet speed if you don't know it is to go to speedtest.net and run a quick free test there. And at the end, it'll show you your upload speed and your download speed. The upload speed is the one you want. Um, convert it into kilobits per second and cut it in half. That's what you want to put into the box. 2,500 works just fine for me. So once I've got that set here, 2,500 kilobits per second, we're pretty much ready to go. And now we just need to figure out how do I get what I've got on the screen onto the internet? Where do I want it to go? So if you look at the settings in here, in OBS, there are a number of presets for services like Facebook Live, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch that you can use. But what I use is a service called Restream. Restream is an online multi-streaming service that allows me to put the same stream live on multiple platforms at once. It's got free and paid uh, subscription options, and multi-platform streaming is one of the, those paid subscription options. But it is really simple to use. I have mine set up for my YouTube channel, for my Facebook page, my Twitch or my Twitter account, uh, my VK account. 
And if you use LinkedIn Live or Twitch or Mixer or any of those streaming platforms, you can choose these from the options as well. Unfortunately, the only platform it doesn't cover as of this video in May 2020 is Instagram. Uh, you have to go live on Instagram from your own mobile device, as far as I'm aware. So once you've made a Restream account, uh, what you do is you get your stream key from Restream. This is like your unique code just for you so that Restream can speak to OBS on your computer. So what you do is you copy it from Restream. We go back into OBS, we go into settings and we go to stream and we copy it in there. Once that's copied in, you're good to go. You're connected to Restream and when you press start streaming, you will go live on Restream. Um, a really great feature from Restream that I use an awful lot is their app Restream Chat. This allows me to see all the comments from each platform in one area. So that means that when I'm live, I can see the comments from YouTube, Facebook, VK and Twitter all in one aggregated feed. Um, so that means that when I'm uh, sitting here doing a live stream, I see all the comments in one place from all the different platforms so I can interact with everybody uh, in real time. Um, if it suits your stream as well, you can also overlay Restream Chat onto your stream in OBS. So that means that the comments come up on the screen and your viewers can see the comments coming up as well. The only thing I'll say about that is you can't moderate them. So whatever's written in the comments will come up on the screen. Something that is really, really important that I've found is the stability of your connection between your computer uh, or laptop and your internet router or your access point and again, how much data you allow outwards from your computer. So part of this is covered in the video bitrate, which I talked about other, earlier. Um, the other side of this is using a wired connection. This is really, really important. If you're using a mobile device, this doesn't really apply to you, but in essence, what I'm saying is, if at all possible, don't use your Wi-Fi connection. Uh, Wi-Fi can and does work but it's a much better idea for the stability of your stream to have a wired connection into your router if this is at all possible. Um, my laptop doesn't have an ethernet port, which is what you would need. So I had to buy an ethernet to Thunderbolt adapter from Apple in order to be able to wire directly into my router. Uh, but since I've done that, my streams have been a lot more stable. The first two that I did were dropped out a couple of times. Since I've done that, I've had no issues. Um, Wi-Fi isn't as reliable as a wired connection. I found personally that it drops out randomly, um, but sometimes you don't have the option of not using Wi-Fi. Sometimes you have to use it. Uh, now, I'm no expert on how Wi-Fi or local internet connections work. As far as I'm aware, the Wi-Fi network you're connected to is affected by everyone else who joins it. So if you get along with everyone else who uses your internet connection, they might be nice enough or kind enough to disconnect from the Wi-Fi network at least while you're doing your stream, so the connection is less affected. But this isn't always possible if you're on a shared network, like if you're trying to stream from a university or something like that. Um, where you might want to stream from could also be in a Wi-Fi blind spot. An awful lot of buildings have these, um, where the Wi-Fi signal is in one area, and it has to try to travel um, a physical distance and also through walls and it has to combat other interference. Uh, moving location can sometimes help that, but at the end of the day, having a wired connection to your router is definitely the most stable way to do it. If you're using a phone or a tablet, uh, everything I said about OBS and Restream doesn't apply. So let's go back to the point where we have our mixer set up and our audio interface is set up and what, where we go from there. So when I'm streaming from my phone, for example, I'm just doing a, an Instagram live uh, stream and I'm not going live anywhere else. What I'll do is I'll take the USB cable that comes from the back of my audio interface and I'll put it into this. This adapter is one I got from Apple. It's a USB to lightning adapter. And this allows me to get the audio from my interface into my phone. So this will also work with my tablet. I've got an iPad as well. Um, but depending on the brand of phone or tablet or device that you have, you may need a different adapter. Um, I know that this works definitely for Apple products. I'm not sure about other products. Um, the handy thing about this adapter is it's also got a charger uh, so that my phone won't die when I'm doing a live stream, which is really handy. Um, so from there, once it's plugged in, I open up whatever platform I want to go live on and my phone will automatically choose the interface audio over the phone's built-in microphone. So this also works for FaceTime and voice memos, practically any other app 
that needs audio input or where you need to speak into the app to, to make it work. Um, a good tip if you're using Wi-Fi is to put your phone on or, or your tablet on airplane mode and on silent mode so that incoming calls and notifications won't interrupt your stream. Um, if you're just using mobile data to stream, just switch your phone or tablet onto silent mode. Uh, does more or less the same job. Um, if you want to multi-stream from your mobile device, Restream as of this video in May 2020 doesn't have a mobile version, but you can use an app like Prism, which does the same job. As I said earlier on, I'm not an expert at any of this. I'm just a musician who tried a lot of different things and found a setup that works reliably. Um, if you feel that there's a way to improve what I've got here at the moment, I'd love to hear about it, as I'm sure all the viewers would as well. Um, so please do leave your suggestions in the comments. Similarly, if you have any questions, I'll do my best to help you. I'm not the most techie person in the world, but I'll, I'll do my best uh, to give you a few pointers. So as of the making of this video in May 2020, I'm going live weekly across all of my social media channels. So that's uh, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and VK. You'll find me everywhere if you type in Shane Hennessy Music. Um, I hope you can catch one of the live streams, and if you end up on one of the live streams from this video, please do let me know. The last thing I'll say is please do subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it in advance, and uh, I hope you'll enjoy all the rest of the, uh, the music that's up on the channel. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again the next time.